Okay, so uh, uh, special requests from some friends. They still uh, have questions about how to how to make a cigar, how from scratch, you know. So that's this is it. I mean, there doesn't doesn't go any further than this. Right here, I have laid down uh, some of the components. Uh, I have my secos, I have my visos, and I have my ligeros here. Those, these are basically different parts of the plants, and they're divided, you know, uh, according to their characteristics. Um, <clears throat> so, just to start from, you know, really basics, right here, I will take one seco, maybe two. It, it really depends on the cigar. The, you know, type of cigar that you're gonna be rolling sometimes might require more than one of each component. Sometimes two, three, it, it, it doesn't matter really, but here just for, uh, just for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm gonna be taking, I'm gonna try to roll probably about a Robusto Robusto size cigar. Okay. My diesel right there. And now I'm gonna take my ligero. I'm gonna take, uh, like I say, just an example. Man, sometimes you have to be picky and selective, you know, uh, with, the, with the leaf, depending when we buy. When we buy tobaccos at retail level from a retailer, yeah, go ahead. We have to, well, work with whatever we can get our hands on. So that's my ligero right there. I put the ligero in the middle, trying to keep it right there in the middle. And at this point, like I say, depending on what size of the cigar you're gonna be rolling, like I say, we say uh, Robusto. Yeah, I think I can, I can go for a Toro here. Let's go for a Toro instead. Like I say, when you're making a cigar, a lot of stuff, sometimes there's not really a recipe. Oh, one leaf of these, two leaf of that. You, the secret for to roll a cigar is here in the hand, you know? So you have to like feel. And at that point, let's say we're going for a Toro, Toro size. Right, which is 52 ring gauge by six inches. So roughly, and then we're gonna take, we're gonna break, we separate, right? And we, we need to start feeling, we need to start feeling the, the gaps, you know, like in the hand, you're gonna feel like, okay, I need more here or more there, you know? Okay, and we're gonna reuse, you know, that, that part of the leaf that I broke there, we just put, put it down, and uh, that's what we're gonna use to continue uh, filling the, the gaps, you know, any possible gap. You see, I need a little bit more here at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna put some there. And again, this is the really, this is the most difficult part, bunching, in my opinion. Some people say, ah, oh, it is it's easy. Well, not really, if you, because, like I say, you go by by hand, you're by, by the feeling in your hand, you know? There's no, there's no uh, a recipe, you know? There's no like a, a specifics, you know? Like one leaf of this, one leaf of that, right? Like I think I mentioned that earlier, so. But you guys get the idea. Oops. Okay, right there. Yeah. And it could be kind of messy. But that's how we learn. That's how we all learn, okay? Okay, I'm gonna keep this here, these you know, little pieces here because I might need to come back to this, you know, and complete my, my bunch. At this point, what I'm gra grabbing here is my binders. Binder is the leaf that basically keeps everything together. 
with my binder, I will create an exoskeleton, if you want to call it, for the lack of a better term. And I'm trying to cover here and keep it moist because this one in particular, it needs to be a little bit, you know, a little bit moist, you know, not too much, not too crazy. You don't want this completely soak in, in water, you know, that could be bad business later. Okay, let me move this out of the way so you guys can see. But that's my binder right there, right? I'm using two binders, as you can see. Sometimes if the binder is big enough or long enough, I just use one, you know? But this is where we start. Now we're gonna, I have my bunch here, I'm gonna start rolling. And at this point, we just go, going, rolling, okay? And at the same time, we need to keep with the hand getting a feeling for the cigar, you know? Because at this point, I still can come back, you know? If I all of a sudden realize that, oh, I have a soft spot, soft spot here, I can come back and fix it, you know? And that's what I'm doing right now. And this is where these other parts become handy. Like I said, we don't throw them away right away because this is still good leaf, you know? It's just that it wasn't needed at the time. So, but eventually we try to, like I say, okay, okay, we're rolling, and continue. Okay, at this point, we roll with the hand, we try to get the feeling for the cigar. Any soft spot at this point, like I said, we still can correct them, you know? Okay, oh, hold on. I keep forgetting I have a, <laughs> a new toy. My cigar cutter or tuck cutter. At this point, I'm just gonna use to cut the excess here. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Still need to cut a little bit more. Okay. And at this point, Have basically the body now this is going into the mold my cigar mold right here okay and make sure that everything okay feels good right there and then we're gonna proceed to let's roll one more just for, you know, the heck of it. <laughs> like I say, the only downside of working up here in Idaho, North Idaho, is that, is that the humidity levels, are, the relative humidity is so low, especially during the winter. Year round, it's, it's lower than obviously anywhere closer to the equator, you know. Uh, Central America, the Caribbean, even in the States, you know, Florida, it's a place that, you know, relative humidity stays high in the 60s, you know, 70s, sometimes like 80, 90 percent up here in Idaho. Nope. Right now, last time that I checked, we are, we're in the low 30s right now, like 32 or something like that. So that is not good for the, if you're trying to roll a cigar. So that's why I, I need, you know, keep using water, you know, and a little bit of moist on the towel to cover that, to keep it, I'm just gaining some time there. Okay, okay, let's roll, yeah, let's roll one more, okay? Let's go for my seckles. Okay, that one. And I wanna get rid of this vein here because we don't need it too thick, you know, a really thick vein might be bad business later down the road. Make my life a lot more difficult, a lot more difficult. 
Okay, grab one more. Uh, like I say, you play a lot by ear. When you're rolling a cigar, you have to, like I mentioned earlier, get the feeling for the cigar, for the bunch, in this case, you know? And that's how you know, okay, yeah, I need more. And I go ahead and grab some Viso. Viso is my understanding from the middle, somewhere in the middle or lower middle of the part of, of the plant, but uh, imparts a lot of flavors on the cigars. Uh, as well, Seco. Seco is from the bottom. It's at the bottom of the plant that typically is a lot thinner than this. Seco is probably the uh, the more thinner of the bunch, you know. Now I'm grabbing from my Vijeros here. Ooh, it's getting really dry, that one. Let me see if I can grab another one because that one is gonna kill me. Let me see. Let's say, I have to play by ear. I have to play by ear. That one that I just grabbed, man, start like coming like apart, like huh, sawdust. Okay. It's my my ligero. That one always goes in the middle. I try to pack the ligero in the middle of the bunch. Ligero is the one component on the cigar that imparts uh, the strength. The strength is determined by the amount of Ligero that you put on that cigar. Um, and in terms of strength, not necessarily flavor, but more like nicotine, nicotine content, you know? Okay, put that aside, save for later, Get this. Again, we're gonna go for that Toro size. Again, six inch length, um, 52 ring gauge. Get the feeling. Okay. Grab a little bit more from here. Make sure that we have Okay, again, at this point I grab my bunch. I'm gonna be, try to work with the binder here, make it, make it last. Let's start rolling here, okay? And you try to roll at the same time, both hands at the same time, so we're not twisting like this, you know? When you try to roll, you need to roll at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm already here seeing that at this point, I can tell I put too much. I have to go back, why? And I noticed that at the beginning, but I, I decided to give it a shot. My viso was a really thick one. So, I'm gonna improvise here on the fly, right? I'm just gonna go with probably half of the viso. Go half. You can play, you can play, like I said, this is like cooking, this is like a recipe. And you're cooking, you know, sometimes beforehand, you know that, hey, I need to put uh, X amount of salt and pepper on this recipe or the sauce or whatever you're doing. So sometimes with you rolling a cigar, it's the same. You are like, okay, I know that this is supposed to feel a certain way. And halfway there, I noticed that I was like, okay, yeah, it's gonna be probably too much or too big. But like I say, we got plenty of room to, to play here, okay? And the mold definitely is gonna help the mold is the one that basically um, give that shape, that form to the cigar. And at the beginning, like I say, I have seen some cigars that you're like, there's no way 
that cigar is gonna look good. It's a, uh, it's all rugged at the, you know, at the end. You're like, man, that doesn't look like anything like a cigar. And then you come back 20, 30 minutes later, boom, and the cigar mold that has worked, it's magic, you know? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy here on this one. Okay. Okay. And once again, my chaveta, help me out with this. And And now, put the lid on this guy. Cover this for a few minutes here in the mold. I'm gonna put it on the press. I'm gonna press it for 20, 30 minutes. And then, like I said, the press is what it's gonna do. is gonna put that all together and keep it pressed there for 20, 30 minutes. When you come back, like I said, that cigar is gonna look amazing. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much a quick, you know, a quick uh, um, example of uh, how to roll a cigar. <laughs> okay, bye.